Great. Okay, uh, good evening everyone and a very warm welcome. Uh, my name is James Sarnison and it's my great pleasure uh, to host this Zoom call. Uh, it's a celebrity Zoom call uh, <laughs> with the Juice Plus Elite. And uh, the uh, wonderful guest that we have tonight is um, our elite um, new NMD, Dan Aldridge. So Dan, a very, very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much, James. Appreciate it. Yeah, good. Yeah, so it's, it's absolutely great to have you on. And um, so we just asked a little bit before the call, but whereabouts are you tonight? Cool. Okay, so I am in my kitchen in right. Bowbridge near Bath. Um, yeah, just um, in Wiltshire, so southwest of England. Brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, okay, yeah, and, and just as an aside, I mean, you just said that no one in your locality is, is in the business. Your business is, is much further afield and much broader. Yes, definitely. Well, Alex um, Webb is my direct upline, um, and he lives in Bath, um, and he um, introduced me to the business, and that, that, that's where it kicked off, really. There was no one in our area doing this, so I, was, I decided to become the person to make it happen in this region. Well so, done. yeah, it really is still an open playing field down here. Well done. So just tell us, Dan, a little bit about your background. So, you know, what, what were you doing before, when you heard about Juice Plus and, and, you know, what was your scenario? Sure. So I left school at the age of 16 and instead of going into further education at university, I wanted to start making my own money. I was sort of a bit of a grafter and I've always wanted to sort of um, just start earning really. So I left school at age of 16 and went straight into a carpentry and joinery apprenticeship. And that was mainly because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And I knew that I liked making things. I liked my hands-on practical work with people, team building and that kind of thing. So I got into construction, got into carpentry and joinery. And that's where I stayed really from the age of 16 to the age of 25, um, working in joinery workshops and on building sites. Um, working 8 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. every single day for almost 10 years. Um, and I found myself very early on into my carpentry career, starting to clock watch, starting to count down the days till the weekend, you know, looking forward to my once a year holiday, you know, and I looked around the carpentry workshop and, you know, a lot of the blokes in there were 50, 60 years old and they never had, you know, they had once a year holiday and they had banger cars they never really had you know a luxurious lifestyle and I thought to myself wow is that my future am I going to be an old carpenter guy who just gets through life and is waiting for retirement um, and that's when I started to actively look for opportunities but I had no idea what I was doing um, so at that point I was open-minded and when I got a message on Facebook from someone saying would I be interested in an opportunity I'm sure 99.9% .9 of the rest of the population dismissed that message um, because it was a spammy message but I was probably the 0.1% that was open to opportunity and replied to the message and got invited to an event so wow. I found out about Juice Plus through Facebook through a, a spammy message um, and then I got invited to an event and how do you think that person found you they on, honestly it was a terrible message um it said um would you like to make an extra one thousand pounds extra a month and they must have copy and pasted it to every single person on their facebook um and do you know what it's a great lesson um it wasn't a very good way of doing the business but it's a great lesson in terms of you can't say the wrong thing to the right person yeah yeah and you know i was the right person i was open-minded i was looking for opportunity i was desperate to change my life i had big goals i had big dreams i had ambition and for me, I was, just, I was just saying, come on then, show me what this opportunity is. I was a bit skeptical, but I was desperate to change my life. So yeah, that's how it, it landed upon me. Well, you're the ideal person, Dan. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's extraordinary how when you actually want something to happen, then you, you, you sort of attract the right scenario. So there you were, mm. you, you, you attracted that. So tell us, so you, you responded to the ad, or not the ad, but you responded to the message, um, and then you were introduced, how were you introduced, and, and where did it go from there? Yeah, so the next bit of the story is quite funny, because we got invited to an event in Bath, um, and I got home from one day in the workshop, had my scruffy clothes on, come through the front door, 
Um, I had a message saying the event was on at 7 p.m. in Bath, which is about half an hour drive for me. Um, and I said to my girlfriend, Harriet, um, there's an event on in Bath tonight that teaches you all about online networking and how to make money from your smartphone. Do you want to go with me? And Harriet was watching Carnation Street on the sofa and she was like, no way am I going to spend my evening going to a crappy meeting. Um, it would be a complete waste of time. So we actually didn't go to the meeting. Oh my God, really? You didn't go? No, I didn't go. And then yeah. um, a couple of weeks later, the person who invited me actually did a great job because they followed up with me and said, there's a meeting in my hometown of Trowbridge. Um, would this one be better for you? And I said to Harriet, this time I'm going with or without you. And Harriet um, decided that because the girl who invited me, which is Alex's daughter, Romy, um, because she was quite good looking, Harriet didn't want me to go to meet Romy on my own. So <laughs> Harriet came to keep an eye on me. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. And so tell us, what, what, was your, what was your feeling when you saw what you saw and what did you actually see that night? Well, again, this goes to show how you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. We turn up at the venue. It was a very old, kind of like scary, derelict building. Um, and we walked up the stairs to the event and there was a room of about five or six people in there. It was a very small, you know, empty event. And I sat in the back of the room. There was loads of chairs of seats in front of me, all empty. There was no one there. And me and Harriet sat in the back of the room and we had our arms crossed. And we was very much there in terms of, let's just have a look. Let's just have a look. And the information that was given to us um, was fantastic, but it was delivered in a very bad way. So the actual event itself was, you could tell the girl who was speaking, it was her first event. They didn't really know what they were talking about, but they showed us the compensation plan. And Harriet being a school teacher, she said to me, if they're making money and they're doing it like this, then we can make a fortune. Because Harriet's a school teacher, she's used to presenting. Um, I was a carpenter, I was willing to do whatever it took to change my life. And as soon as I saw the 80,000 pounds worth of bonuses to collect, yeah. Yeah. that was the thing that made me go, ah, this opportunity can change my life. And I said to myself, I don't know how, but I'm gonna make it to the top of the business, I'm gonna be a PMD. Um, and I don't care how long it takes. Um, so yeah, I'm nearly approaching my fourth year now, um, and we've reached NMD, and Harriet's following very closely behind me to um, become an NMD in my business, um, and it's just been the most incredible journey. So the, the, the first event um, wasn't great, but you know, it landed on the right person, which was me. Dan, well done. No, it's had to well, well done to both of you. So um, moving on a little bit, I mean, what was your first six months like? You know, because some people on the call tonight will be in their first six months now. So tell us, what was your first six months like? Um, yeah, what, what, what was going on? So the first six months for me were um, very, like, for, I didn't get my first customer for five weeks and I tried really hard. Wow. Um, I was posting every single day, I was talking to new people every single day. Um, and I was getting a hell of a lot of rejection. And the reason why I didn't get any sales, and if you guys are coming to the Juice Plus Power Day on the 6th of October, I'm gonna be talking about this. The reason why I didn't come um, get any sales was because I was a unhealthy, broke carpenter who had no credibility, no, um, I had no fitness and health um, knowledge. Um, I lived for the weekends and people didn't look at me as someone who could help them get healthy. So I had to show them that I was serious about this business. I had to show them that I was um, a product of the product and show people that the products worked. Um, well, how did you do that, Dan? How did, you, how did you transform yourself? Or what did you do? Well, the main thing was that I showed up every single day on social media showing people I was taking my shakes and capsules. I was sharing how the products were working for me. So I was sharing my, um, my before and afters, although they weren't um, anything drastic, people could see slight changes within me. But the most, um, the most impressive thing about the difference with me was my mindset. People could see that I was, I was happy, I was excited, I was on a mission. Um, and those things attracted people to me because they wanted a little bit of that 
So it wasn't necessarily products. They, they, they wanted a little bit of the happiness and excitement. Um, so that's when the ball started rolling for me. I got my first team member um, about five weeks in as well. So I got my first client and team member about five weeks in. Um, and and where then, did they come from, Dan? Where, how, where did you get your first team member from? My first team member was a girl called M. She was at university up north in Newcastle and she was studying nutrition. So I thought I'd hit a, hit a gold mine because she was doing... <laughs> Um, and yeah, she's floated around in my business for some time. Um, and she got to STD, she was pretty good. And then after that, I got a bit of confidence, I got a bit of belief. You know, I knew if I could get one, I could get 100. Um, and I started to really rock and roll then. And I started to get maybe two to three team members a month consistently after that. And Harriet really kicked in, and Harriet was much better than me at this business. Um, but at that point, we shared a franchise. So Dan and Harriet's franchise was one number and all the team members that I would get in and she was getting was all going under me. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually built our team to about 30 strong in the first six months. Mm. Not all frontline, maybe six or seven frontline. And those team members had team members which made a group of 30. And then actually about exactly six months in, all 30 of our team members quit except for M Peplo, the original first team member. And the reason why they all quit was because we had a WhatsApp group with the whole team in and we didn't understand the compensation plan fully at that point. And there was a misinformation somewhere where we, you know, were told about percentages on team members and stuff like that. And our whole team um, ganged up on me and Harriet and said that we lied to them and they all quit in one night. So we were back down to one team member six months in at an SC level. So we had to then build it back up. So my journey to success, you know, when you see the line of, um, you know, in the valleys, on the mountains, in the ditches, our, our first dip was that six months in. To wow. business, um, from 30 team members down to one. So that's when we had to rebuild it back up. And then, and, and Dan, you know, a lot of people would be very interested, how did you go about building it back up again? I mean, that's quite a, quite a task to, to, to lose everyone and to have to go back up again. How, how did you gear yourself up for that? Well, I had, I had already hit rock bottom in my career, like my carpentry career. So I, to me, it wasn't a problem because I just knew that if I built a team of 30 once, um, then I could do it again. But my mission was not only to get the thir team of 30 again, but was to keep the team of 30 again. <laughs> yes. What I actually did the second time round was I started to learn about leadership and I started to read books on network marketing and I started to develop myself into a leader that could inspire other people to become leaders. So the book that helped me change my business from you know, a, a rubbish SC business to a SSC QNMD business was the book by John Maxwell called the 21 laws of leadership. And that book was the education I needed on how to grow a solid network marketing team and lead by example from the front. So, you know, my bookshelf upstairs, you know, it's only one shelf long of about 20 books, but each one of those books has added so many thousands of pounds to my bank. And each book cost about five to 10 pounds. So knowledge is the key to success in this business. And you know, the only reason why I wasn't successful in network marketing to start with was because I had never done network marketing before. So if you're new to this business right now and you feel like you're um, not getting anywhere, then you need to go and educate yourself and be a sponge and learn everything you can about network marketing, leadership, people, um, and how to grow an organization because it's not something that came naturally to me and I was not a natural leader. Um, so it's been um, a massive learning curve for me. Well, Dan, I think that's seriously impressive, I have to say. I mean, everybody will be so inspired by what you're saying. I mean, you know, this is absolutely great. Your commitment to yourself is, is just outstanding. Um, so everybody, uh, just remember that um, as we're talking to Dan tonight, um, you've got any questions, if you can put them on the chat uh, box, you'll see at the bottom, um, and, and we haven't got any at the moment, but would you just start thinking about questions? Uh, because obviously we've got an extraordinary person here and we're going to be asking him questions at the end, right? So what questions have you got? Uh, and, and start thinking about them and start putting them in the chat box and then we'll visit them at the end.
Dan, that's brilliant. So let's just move on a little bit. I think a lot of people would be really fascinated to know what is your daily method of operation with the business? Sure. So um, the DMO can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. And my DMO at an MMD position is a bit more, you know, I've got more responsibilities in terms of organizing events and organizing Zoom calls like you have done with this Zoom call, James. Um, but to be honest with you, the basics have always been the basics for me. And there's one thing that me and Harriet teach to our team is called the success triangle. So if you imagine like an equilateral triangle, at the top of the triangle, you have connecting with new people. The second point of the triangle is posting and creating content on social media. And the third point of the triangle is um, following up um, and inviting to calls or um, inviting to the opportunity. So it's all about connecting, posting and messaging. And yeah. that is honestly what I do on a daily basis. So I connect with new people, I post uh, on my social media and I follow up. I, I love that. Now, Dan, can I ask you, the connecting with new people, is that online or offline, the one at the top of the triangle? It's both. It's both. So I tend to, I, I, I can work my numbers quicker on social media um, so I can reach more people faster, but eyeball to eyeball connection is number one and it always will be. Yeah. Um, so I find that for every 50 Facebook messages you send, it's about as powerful as one real life conversation. So if you can send, if you can speak to 50 people a day on social media and speak to five people every day in real life, then yeah. you're definitely onto a winner. So you, def you, you do need to get out of your comfort zone and do a bit of both. Yeah. Um, and the offline stuff is only something that I've started to do more recently. And that's mainly because I've become more confident now. To start yeah. with, I was very nervous about speaking to people about the opportunity. I was scared of getting rejected. Yeah. Um, but it does come over time and with practice. Yep. I love that. So, um, I mean, what, what, what would you be doing, you know, when you start the day? I mean, obviously every day is probably different, but give us an idea of a little bit of your routine. How quickly are you on Facebook in the morning or, or are you straight away or, or how does that, what, when does that happen? So my, our morning routine is quite, um, <laughs> it's quite hardcore um, because right, my mindset, you know, the way, you know, I was just brought up in a working class family. Um, I've always been taught that, you know, um, everything does sound too, too good to be true and negative news is always attacking me. So I'm quite a naturally like a negative person. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I have to do when I wake up is I need to work on myself. So spiritually, mentally and physically are the three ways in which I work on myself. First of all, physically, our alarm goes off at 10 past five every single morning and by 5.45, we are in the car on the way to the gym, um, and we work out in the gym from 6 till 7 p.m. every single day. Then I will get home, and I'll have my shaking capsules, and I will have a bath. <laughs> and in the bath, I will be listening to Jim Rohn, self-development, and audio books. So by the time I have got out of the bath, um, obviously done my, my fringe, um, oh, cool. and dressed yeah. for the day, I have worked my body out, I've worked my mind out with the self-development, and I'm feeling good about myself. So the first thing that I do is I sort my, um, my energy out and my headspace ready to attack the day. So I sit down to work on my Juice Plus business um, about nine, between 9 and 10 a.m. I try to get there for 9 a.m. And what would be some of the, what would you start doing then, Dan? Let's say you say, I'm starting to work on my Juice Plus business. What would that entail? So the first thing I do um, at the moment is, well, they always say that when you're on an aeroplane and the aer say the aeroplane's going down for crash landing, the oxygen masks drop down. The yep. thing I have been taught is that you always put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on your baby. Because if you're not alive, you won't be able to be there to put it on your baby. So when I do my self-development, I'm sorting myself out first. Once I'm sorted out, at 9 a.m. when I get on my Facebook, the first thing I do is I help my team. Mm -hmm. So I message my team, I run my reports, I let them all know what points they're on, what they need for promotions, um, who's close to PB, um, and basically get them set up for the day so that they, they know what they've got to do. And these are for the only the sort of the dealers and DDs. Anyone SC and above, they have to do it themselves because they have to become leaders. So what I'm doing is I'm 
sorting out the newbies and helping them get on track, maybe doing an aspiring post in my team and getting my team rocking and rolling um, by 10 a.m. And then as soon as I've set my team up, that's when I will go back to doing Dan Aldridge, building my franchise, building my customer base by talking to new people on Facebook, Instagram, online, offline. Um, and in my DMO, actually, one of the most important things in my DMO is I do one thing every day that feeds my soul. So what I mean by that is I make sure I go for a walk, I go for a run. You know, today I went for a, play, a game of golf. I do one thing every day that, you know, um, is good for me and sharpens my axe and allows me to rest because you can work this business so hard and it can be so intense sometimes that you can burn yourself out and you can't give your best of your ability to, to your people. So, um, yeah, I make sure I have something exciting planned throughout my day. And then I just sort of live my life and build my business as I go. Um, you know, we go out for lunch, we go out for meals, um, we go, you know, we go shopping now and then, but our business is very much, um, a lifestyle, not a job. Um, mm. and we just put ourselves at a very high level. I love that, Dan. So tell us uh, very quickly, how are you building your team? So you said, you know, you, 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 you've obviously got now a, a very substantial team that's taken you to NMD. Can you give us a bit of an idea of how your team is structured and, and, and um, you know, how many people you've got in your team now? Um, so in our group, we have, um, well, I, I, <laughs> it's quite bad. I clear them out all the time. If they're inactive, I, I remove them. Uh, well, but we have about 330 in the group. But within the group, um, you know how it is. Maybe 50 of them are like hardcore active people. The other guys are maybe doing one or two orders. Um, so it is a complete numbers game in, term of, in terms of how many are in your team and how many are active. Yep. Um, and the way we get them, um, well, in five minutes at 9 p.m., Harriet, oh, Harriet upstairs is going to be doing the Monday night 9 p.m. opportunity Zoom call. Um, so every Monday night at 9 p.m. we have an opportunity Zoom. We also do third-party phone calls. So every single time someone has someone interested, they put them in touch with their upline to give them information. Um, so third parties, Zoom calls, and then offline events, inviting and promoting events yes. are the ways we build our business. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. So what would you say your top five tips for success? First of all, and the most important one is that you, you develop and grow yourself because this business is a, a personal development course cleverly disguised as a business. Yeah. So the more you grow, the more your business will grow. So top tip number one is personal development. Yeah. And when you do personal development, do it in a smart way so that you're not, um, you're not stopping your work time to do it. I mean, it is good to stop and read books every day, but I, ha I make sure that I do my self-development in my downtime. So whenever I'm in the car, I listen to audio books. Even when I'm doing things like unloading the dishwasher, which I've just done before this Zoom call, I had an audio book on. So in all of those little moments of the day where you can't physically do anything because you have to do jobs like that, that's when I'm educating myself on the business. So number one is personal development. Um, my second top tip is take action from the get-go. So a lot of people, when they join, they think they have to go and read all the knowledge and they have to become an expert on the Juice Plus product range and all this kind of stuff. When actually, um, excitement and enthusiasm and taking action from the get-go is the best way to build your business. And then once you have a team of people, um, even if you're brand new and you don't really know how to um, lead them to start with, make sure you get your upline to help you build your business with you or sometimes for you. So stay locked in line with your upline and make sure that they make them work for you because your upline gets paid on you. So make sure that you get your money's worth out of them um, and make sure they, they work for you to build your business. So use your upline. Okay. Very good. The third top tip um, is to become a product of the product. I would say. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are representing a health company yeah. um, and we need to show people the products work and we need to, and the Juice Plus, you know, slogan is to inspire healthy living all around the world. And I think that's really important to remember. Like there's something I think about every single day. Our job is to inspire healthy living all around the world. And around the around the world part is 
the most exciting bit because we're in 27 different countries. So please don't forget Instagram and stuff because there's so many people out there that have never even heard of this business. You know, on, on certain, um, certain moments, I feel like everybody in the UK is doing Juice Plus or they've heard of it or they've tried it. But there's so many different countries out there that we can expand to. So you've got to think big with it as well yeah. um, and not neglect the plan. You, have you got an international business? I have, but it's not as big as I want it to be. Um, I've got people floating around in different countries everywhere. Um, well, that will come. Exactly, yeah. 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 So number five, what's number five? Number five would be to um, take it serious and decide to go pro. Um, and that's, that's what a point that I was going to come in, on to later on within the call. And that was, there's two moments in everybody's Juice Plus business that, that define you. The first moment is the moment that you sign up as a franchise partner. And the second moment is um, the, just the day you decide to actually do it. Um, so that's the, um, that's the defining factor for when you decide to do it. That's brilliant. All right, Dan. I mean, this is so inspiring and stuff. It's unbelievably inspiring. So what are your goals for this year? I mean, obviously, we're, we're already, you know, we're in the final quarter now of the, of the year, but still so much to play for. So what, what, what are your goals for this year? Or perhaps it's best to say, what are your goals for the coming year? You know, up until September 2019. Where, where, where are you at with that? Yeah. Um, so my goals with the rest of the year are to just keep growing on the momentum we have. Um, the jump from NMD to IMD um, is massive, so I just need to keep growing. Well, that's and what that is, Dan. So it's up from 40,000 up to... 80. Right, doubling. Doubling, yeah. So I'm just trying to... This is a really good top tip, actually. If you're at QNMD right now, and obviously you need to get to 40K pay line, set yourself a mini promotion to celebrate yourself. So set yourself a goal to get to 30K pay line and make a little mini promotion up. So what I'm doing is I'm setting myself a goal to get to 60K pay line. And once I get to that, I'm going to go and celebrate. Yeah. Um, because you can't, um, you have to pat yourself on the back now and then. Yeah. So I've set are, myself- Are you quite close to that, Dan, that 60? Yeah, I was, I ended on 55 last month. So wow. I should hit it this month. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So tell us, okay, so that to keep growing, to keep growing is your goal, yeah? Yeah, keep growing up, help my- um, people, my leadership legs, you know, take their business in, to the next level. Um, I want to hit Club 24 this month um, to focus on clubs and PBs. And then um, going into next year, I'm helping all of my team get in, uh, get in position now, ready for an explosion in 2019. So everybody... Um, how would you... I mean, you say getting everybody in position for an explosion in 2019. I mean, that's so empowering, but what does that actually mean in terms of what you're doing with them? It means recruit, recruit, recruit. Every single right. person in the team, no matter where they are, needs minimum of five front line and you know, active front line that are ready to all, it's basically get, getting your ducks in a line. So October, November will be the growth months. And then throughout December, we're gonna go absolutely insane everybody recruiting ready for january 1st news resolutions and it's going to be an, a crazy crazy explosion of um growth well i believe it i believe it i mean you know based on what you're, you're saying and what you're doing i mean uh, yeah anyone in your team that, that is going to be their experience so just finishing up this part of the call down for the new people listening to call the first time and obviously lots of people at different places of their beliefs and understanding but for the new people or people that have been in for a while how would you describe what your feeling is about the potential of the business and what you see of the future well the, the thing that changed my life was going to my first event because i but until i went to my first event i didn't really get the scale of this business i didn't really understand how you know how people can live a life and a career from this business so the first, my first thing is, if you have to move the business, make sure you get to an event. Um, and my excitement for this business is just, and my belief in the business is unshakable. And the reason why it's unshakable is because of people like you, James, um, Alex, you know, you guys are, are PMDs, you're living a lifestyle, you know, you have the freedom, and there's no other opportunity on the planet that allows you time and money. You know, you normally have to choose time or money. 
but this opportunity gives you both. So I always tell people that if there's anything ever in life that you want to give 100%, it's your network marketing business mm -hmm. because it can allow the most amazing, amazing life. And we only get one. So why not work really, really, really hard for three to five years because this is a three to five year career and get to PMD. Just get there. Even, you know, I don't care if it takes me 10 years to get to PMD because I'm loving the journey. Um, but I'm determined to make 2019 my year because Jim Rohn um, changed his life. He changed his life for, at the, from the age of 25 to 30. And I joined this business at the age of 25. So I want to be as successful as Jim Rohn was. Oh. By the way. He was 30. Um, and I want that to be my story. So I have to make it happen. Well done. Well done. I mean, seriously, very, very impressive. I mean, you are so well positioned. I mean, not just in terms of being an NND, but mentally and in terms of your DMO. I mean, it very, very impressive. So let's just move on straight away now, everyone. Um, and Dan, if we just got a little bit more time, everybody, if you've got questions to ask him, I mean, this is a, I have to say, I think this is a staggering call, Dan. <laughs> staggering. Because the way that you have reinvented yourself and the way you have focused yourself is beyond imagination. And I just applaud you, really applaud you. I mean, you're going all the way. You are going all the way. You're going PMD and way beyond. You really are. I mean, Thank you. very, very impressive. So everyone, let's just look and, and, and I'm just looking at some of the questions. Keep the questions flowing now, everyone, because we're into that, that zone now where we're going to ask, uh, so if someone asks you, do you want to come skiing in December? I don't know <laughs> sure who that is. <laughs> uh, all right, so, um, right, so someone like, yeah, Katie, Katie asks, Katie Crisps, um, how do you get your team members, Dan? Do they start as customers? Well, this is actually something that we have been focused on lately, um, and it, it wasn't something that we did massively to start with but it is definitely something we're trying to do more of now. And the reason why is because we had a Zoom call the other day with Seamus and Mary Penrose, and this is what those guys are doing. Um, so we have focused heavily on our, um, our client support group, and we are now really trying to go in there and really support them and build relationships with them so they feel like they are already doing the business because they're all posting in there. Um, and we're basically fishing out the ones that are showing signs of loving the products enough to represent them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't, but we, we are trying to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how many people, I mean, have you got quite a lot of people in your client, customer support group? Your client, you, you call it client support group, do you? Yeah, so we have groups. One is called the XXY Health Club. One, the is, called, one is called yeah. the what? The XXY Health Club. Yeah. So we like to think of it as like a spa. So when they, when they join the products, they, get, they join the health club and they come into the health club with their shakes and their capsules. And that's, where they, that's a community of people who are all on the same health journey together to support and love on each other. Um, and then we have the opportunity group, which is the XXY community, where people um, who are interested in the opportunity get added to that group. And then within the group, um, they join our Zoom calls and we post now about the opportunity. And again, we fish from that pond um, and find the people that want to join. Yep, brilliant. And you said you had three groups. So it's the health club, the community, and then... And then the final one is the team group, which is where we mentor our team. Yeah, and these are all Facebook groups. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. That, that's, that's amazing. Um, Char asks, what types of social media and where specifically are you, are you working mainly? Yeah, so I always tell people you have to work what works for you. So it, it's a numbers game, right? So you need to go where the people are. So my main audience is on Facebook, so I work mainly on Facebook. But there's so many people out, out there with amazing Instagram audiences, and you just need to cash in on where the people are. So if you have a lot of Instagram followers, go all in on Instagram. If you have a great Facebook following, go all in on Facebook. But when you're new and you haven't really got much of an audience at all, Go with what you enjoy the most. And I believe Facebook's the best because it's where you can build more in-depth relationships with people because you can sort of see through the window pane at their life a little bit more because Instagram's very show real and highlights and filters. Facebook's a bit more real. Um, and then 
Um, Facebook's good because of groups. You can organize people into categories in terms of, do they want to be a product user? Do they want to join the team? You know, um, are they thinking about it? And you can categorize people that way. So for me, Facebook's number one, but Instagram's a close second. Okay, good. All right. Um, yeah, so Rickard asks, uh, I know Rickard is in Scandinavia, he said, for me being a really new at all this, my daytime work is being an IT consultant manager, so talking to people isn't really an issue. However, I want to do this right, and there's an overwhelming amount of information. Where do I really start? So if someone's never done anything, where do they really start? The best place to start is with a list. So I, what I did, I constructed a list, um, a piece of paper, divide it into two columns, business and product. And you, you want to construct a list of as many names as possible of people who you think would be interested in the product and the business. And then you take that list to your upline and you say, help me connect with these people. Um, and your upline will help you with what to say to these people, you know, whether it be Zoom calls or phone calls or one-to-one face-to-face meetups and start connecting people with your upline and helping them um, build a business of people to do the same. Um, so this business is all about talking to people. So the best place to start is just to, just to start talking to people. I mean, earlier, Harriet um, was on a Zoom call with a, a team member who was training another team member. And they were bombarding them with so much social media strategies and interaction posts and filters and they were making it so complicated. And actually, all we have to do is just talk to people. Mm -hmm. So the simplicity of this business is construct a list, start reaching out to people. When you run out of people to talk to, find more people to talk to um, and then start converting strangers into into friendships and the friendships will become clients and team members. This really is a relationship business and it's all about connecting with people, putting them into categories. Are they interested? Are they not? Are they on the fence? Do they need more time? And, you know, your list should always be there. So this is my list from today. So this is what I've done today. Um, these people here are my business leads. And then you can see by their names, um, Lucy is going to join on the 26th. Yep. Uh, this Lucy is joining on the 28th of October. And then Chanel is joining tomorrow, hopefully. And, um, you, and, and, and Dan, who, who are all those people? Are there, there people, connections that you've made through Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, so I got all these names from people who I've added, I've posted. These people have liked my posts and I've messaged them and I've built relationships with them. So a lot of these, some of these people um, are people that have shown interest today. Other people, um, they've been on this list for a a week or so now and I'm waiting for the right time to offer them the opportunity. All these people are interested, but I haven't necessarily asked them to join yet. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely superb. Well done. Um, so Dan, you said that, you know, you took five weeks to get customers, you know, a customer, which, you know, is very real. And a lot of people will be in exactly the same position. Where do you, I mean, I know we've already spoken about this, but where do you specifically get your customers now? Where do I get them from? Yeah. I mean, where, or, or how do you find it is most effective for you to get customers? You, Dan, how do you most effectively get customers yourself? It is all, again, goes back to connecting and posting. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, the, you know, now over the years, I've become a bit more credible and people do reach out to me now. Yeah. Um, so I have become a bit of the go-to guy when it comes to Juice Plus. Yeah. Um, not, and some gar- girls who buy Juice Plus like to have a guy as their rep. Um, I don't know if it's just because they like to have a guy to say, do this, do that, and a bit more bossy than having a girl. Um, yeah. But I, I, do, I do find my customers from sharing how the products make me feel. Um, right, so that's great. So it's really the sharing of how you make, how the, the products make you feel, which is the one that really attracts yeah. you the customers. Yeah. 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 So I make sure that I do at least one product post every single day. And my capsules have been there on my worktop for the past three and a half years. Um, yeah. And I swear by them. Very nice kitchen, by the way. Oh, thanks. I built this. <laughs> I built this myself. No, well, Harriet, she, you know, look. Um, yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of great accolades here. Thank you, Dan. I love the info and the inspiration. Um, what do you say uh, when someone asks you about the business opportunity? How do you start the explanation? So, so if wow. someone says to you, Dan, tell us about the business then. What is this business you're in? 
Well, I, I don't really tell them. I ask them, I, I actually start asking questions. Um, I start asking who they are, what do they do? Um, what about, what have you seen so far? What about the opportunity in you? And I start to, I start to extract pieces of information from them that tells me how to prospect that person. So if somebody says to me, oh, I'd love to do what you do, but I don't have any time, uh, that's when I know that time is their problem and that's the problem I need to fix. So I then start to say, well, why don't you have a look at this business? Because it can allow more time freedom. And I go all in on the time freedom part of the yeah, yeah. job. You know, if they want to be healthier, I talk about how you can get paid to represent the health product. So there's not, there's not one size fits all in terms of the product information. I, I tailor each pitch to suit the person's needs because at the end of the day we need to solve people's problems and when I joined the business my problem was I wanted to have more fun I wanted more adventure um, and I wanted more money so those were the, the bits that if somebody prospected me they should have talked to me about that side of the business yeah. Yeah. yes yeah yeah no that's that, that that's good then that's 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 really amazing so um in terms of the um in terms of the the business, um, what point do you um, interact with people on Facebook or Instagram, and what point do you take them into an actual call or a Zoom call or or something like that? You know, at what point do you transition from it all being basically messaging to to actually a call? As quick as possible. As quick as possible. Um, yeah. As quick as possible, depending on the prospect. Some I can I can tell if somebody's scared to pick up the phone. And to be honest with you, it's a real big warning sign um, because if so somebody, again, if you can tell if someone is what a bit scared to pick up the phone, and and it's a warning sign. Why do you say that? Because if they're scared to pick up the phone, then they're not a very confident person, and they're going to be in a shell, and it, you know, then they're, they're not going to be. I mean, they can grow over time, but I find that the ones that are up for a phone call from the get go are the good people that are willing to have a have a proper conversation about it. Um, so I, I do, I, I do tend to test people and say, um, it's a lot to explain. Would it be okay to give you a five minute call, um, explaining how the business works? And if they say yes, I know I'm onto a winner because uh, again, a phone call or a FaceTime where you can physically look someone in the eyes is yeah. so much more powerful than a, a message conversation. Yeah. Powerful. Well done. I've got to tell you, I've written, I've written seven pages of notes. <laughs> seven pages of notes. I mean, this is seriously outstanding. Outstanding. I mean, it's recorded. <laughs> so I'm going to be listening to this over and over again. I mean, it's utterly superb. So I'm obviously going to get send you a copy. Awesome. I was so grateful, Dan. We're honestly so grateful. Thank you so much for taking up your time. Uh, one final question I want to ask you. I didn't put this in the notes uh, of what I sent you, but how much money do you think you've earned since you've been involved with Duty Plus? I don't know. It's got to be. It's got to be creeping up to seventy-five thousand-ish now. Wow! But that's me and Harriet. Yeah, but I mean that's staggering, though. I mean, when bearing in mind that this is, you know, a business that you started four years ago with no investment, no. And, uh, and it is now literally giving you an income which you're just going to roll on and on and on and grow and grow and grow. So that, that is incredibly impressive. Honestly, at every expense that this business, like the, com the books, the conferences, Barcelona, every single thing that you can do is an investment back into your business. So do not worry to start with about spending money on things that you can't quite afford because I was going to conferences to start with when I had no money because I knew it would pay off in the long run. So invest as much as you can into your business because it, and yourself because it comes back 10 times over. Um, and it, it really, really does pay off. Dan, outstanding. I mean, really incredible. James, I want to say also, I mean, you are so eloquent, you know, before you were saying, Oh, I need to get my, my answers ready and all that. But honestly, you are so up to speed. Um, very, very impressive. Um, so I think on behalf of everyone, I just want to say a huge thank you. Um, I'll, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll um, finish this and get the recording over to you and hopefully it will be as valuable for you as it is for us. Definitely. Thank you so much. Dan, thank you very, very much indeed.
Also, yeah. thank you um, for having me, guys. And there's so many people on this call that I look up to myself. So I feel <laughs> very honoured to be able to add value to you guys because I've learned a lot of what I know from a lot of people on this call. So, um, yeah, thank you, all of you, for listening to me. Um, it, I feel very honoured. And, um, yeah, thank you for all being part of the Juice Plus family because we all, all are one team, right? We are indeed. Dan, thank you so much. Thank you, so Have guys. a great evening and we'll see you, you soon. Let's do it, guys. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.